Hey everyone, welcome back to Storm of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog, and this is our Thanksgiving episode celebrating two years. We have 448 episodes now uh, done and completed and uploaded on YouTube, and I want to thank you guys because without your engagement, without your likes, your dislikes even, uh, your comments, whether you agree with me or not, all the engagement you guys have provided, it's been a, it's me, it meant a lot to me and it's helped this channel grow, and it helps visibility, it helps it in, you know cr increase views um, and get out there to more people, and so we can expand our web and our symbiote out there so we can get more people under our banner so that we can all together be Venom. And, uh, and so that to me has been just so much fun. Obviously, there's been a lot of changes with YouTube and COPPA rules, you know, like, you know abiding by the COPPA law uh, through the FTC who is enforcing those rules and enforcing that law. And uh, I had to go back and make a lot of changes to my YouTube channel. Uh, some things I deleted, some maybe in haste. I get, uh, you know, some people are like, oh, you may have overreacted. Here's some more clearer rules. And they showed me some stuff. And it's true. And I made a video on that. So you can go back and watch, you know, that video. It's a Seek and Destroy vlog, actually. Um, but I did, even with those, I had to go back and renumber those and rename those and put up new thumbnails. And I put a lot of work, went through the, some of the tags and changed out some of the tags. And I was just doing all this just to do what I could to keep this show safe because out of everything that I've ever made on this channel, like Transformers in my car, I loved, but I definitely was gearing that towards a younger audience. Um, you know, there was other things I was working on and, uh, you know, that I did that I feel like did really cater to younger audiences and just to be safe. You know, I backed some of those videos up, some of the ones that I really wanted to keep around or could send to my mom or something at some point, and then I deleted the rest. And, and that way we can have a more focused show um, and a more focused channel where we're just kind of zeroing in just on Venom and doing other little things here and there. But since this has been the show that has made my channel grow the most, uh, this is what I really wanted to focus on and keep the show going and changing and make any changes to previous episodes so we don't get any more deleted because obviously we have one video that did get taken down um <clears throat> upon request and i obliged with that request even though i didn't agree with it uh, but if someone's that upset about something I, you know i will remove it for the most part uh, but it there has to be a, a good reason and i still don't, don't feel like this was one but out of respect you know um i i took it down so uh, that's that's kind of where we are and so we have so I have other episodes like if I you know went to on another podcast or was a guest somewhere I put those in uh, into the playlist as honorary episodes of the Venom vlog so that we're at least still at that 150 episodes per season uh, if not like one or two more so uh, this season is coming to an end very soon and I thank you guys uh, two years ago we started I think the first week in November I, I watched the Tom Hardy uh, training video where he was training to be Venom they cut together this cool little black and white video and they posted up I was hoping they do something like that again this time around but he's already filming the movie and he's already probably got through the training and all that stuff uh, they showed pictures on instagram uh, somewhat of him training and stuff so we already kind of got through all that phase and everything and pre-production phase is over and now they're filming the movie now uh, so we'll hopefully get some information soon and moving forward we'll cover all that weekly on our venom vlog live uh, throughout the month of december so once we hit episode 450 on this show we're going to stop making episodes all the way, probably until like the first or second week of January. We won't come back until that point when work starts to die down for me. Because as you guys know, I'm working three jobs this Christmas and I just won't have time to pump out Venom vlogs. But I want to do a live stream on any day or hour or two that I have off each week because I'm, I'm sure I'll have at least that much time. And we'll just do a live stream and we'll talk about any news that's out there, any comic news, movie news, anything. We'll cover it that way once a week uh, and we'll do like one to two hour streams once a week. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those and then we'll bring the main show back in uh in, in january obviously and then i'll spend december trying to catch up on like transformer stuff and and uh and you know ghost rider and i'll try to catch up on those so when we start the new year i can really just focus on venom for a while and catch up on venom and those other shows won't you know be, you guys won't be missing them too too much so uh yeah a lot of stuff and i just so i wanted to open this episode by saying thank you thank you for helping us get here thanks for getting us near we're you know i think like 90 subscribers away or maybe a little less now from 2000 subscribers uh which is just awesome it's just so awesome to me and uh and so you know I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you guys have got me through some really tough times. You've let me share things with you uh, that I haven't shared with other people and uh, and then some that I have, but you know, having you guys there too and supporting was has always been great. And even those of you who you know don't like some of my content who still come here sometimes, uh, you mean a lot to me too. And I'm glad that you pop in from time to time to check out what we're doing. And hopefully I'll have, you know, future content will interest you more and keep you coming back more often. So uh, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. And uh, without further 
further ado, you know, happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, you know, happy holidays. Any, anything you celebrate, uh, any time, even if you're just taking the day to yourself, uh, whatever it is, or if you're going to be with family, like I hope everything goes well this holiday season. And I hope, uh, you know, you spend a lot of time with your loved ones. If you have them in your life still, hopefully you do. And, uh, and if you don't, you know, you can always comment on my videos and we can uh, kind of hang out, you know, this way and we'll, and you can hang out with our live streams and we'll, we'll communicate that way. Uh, so thank you, but it means a lot. And I'm going to be spending Thanksgiving for the most part by myself. Um, it's tomorrow. I'm filming this the day before on Wednesday, just because I really want to sleep in tomorrow. Uh, I was just thinking about that. I was like, wow, I don't get a lot of sleep anymore, especially with the three jobs. And then we're working on my book still trying to get that done. And then editing two interviews that I, you know, the first one I started with Philip Van and I, I changed that format so many times. So I think this new format, it's just going to be me talking to the camera and reading, you know, it's, it's going to, it's not going to be as overthought as it was before. So you'll see that coming up soon. And then I filmed an interview for a, a Batman retrospective with Sam Liu and Brendan Vietti for the Batman cartoon. And you're going to see that coming up um, very soon as well uh, when I relaunch the um, uh, the uh, Beyond the Source Wall or, or you know, we'll, we'll figure out a format or what show it's going to go on. But uh, you'll see that probably closer to Christmas time. I'm going to take about two or three weeks to edit that one. So uh, yeah, a lot of stuff, but I, I want to say thanks. And uh, and that was what I want to talk about for the beginning of this episode, uh, because this is our toxic Thanksgiving, uh, because this year what I wanted to do for our uh, you know Thanksgiving episode is talk about the Toxin uh, character. There was a miniseries that came out a while ago called, uh, you know, Spider-Man, or it was Venom vs. Carnage, I'm sorry, uh, written by Peter Milligan, and I think the art was by Clayton Crane. And we discussed that on the show, but I always wanted to save this Toxin story for the Summer of Carnage because Toxin is the son of Carnage. Uh, he is, a, 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 you know, all the symbiotes give, you know, ha, you know, reproduce asexually. And uh, or we're learning now in the comics that that may not exactly be true or it was true, but now it can change or something. I don't know. They're, they're working that out. <laughs> Don, Donny Cates and everyone is working that out in their new book. But anyway, for the most part, they re reproduce asexually. I don't think that really much has changed much. And uh, and so Toxin is the offspring of Carnage, the way Carnage is the offspring of Venom. But there was something special about uh, him at first. They were saying he's like the 1000th, um, you know, symbiote of this lineage. Um, because sim you know, symbiotes can have multiple offsprings, or they can have one in some cases. Um, uh, you know, I guess there's, I guess they offspring according to impending doom. I don't know how that explains previous, you know, when when they were on Clintar. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? Whatever. It doesn't matter. So uh, he's the, you know, he's baby one thousand. He's like the thousand in the generation of Venom and Carnages uh, of their specific lineage. And uh, and so they were saying like it's going to come out crazy it's going to come out this like peter milligan wrote this big thing where it's like oh, this is going to be the the craziest symbiote ever and you know what's going to happen and uh and none of that really came true at all um even peter milligan who was the writer of this he created this character named pat mulligan he literally gave the character his same initials and similar name peter milligan pat mulligan uh and then he made him a cop in new york and uh, this cop is now the 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 host human host for this new symbiote called toxin which is kind of half red and half black and uh and honestly this book i mean i don't have much to say about it because it's it's bad like we we talk about venom versus carnage but that was venom versus carnage so today we're talking about toxin uh so yeah i, I forgot to do a proper transition there uh toxin is the miniseries we're talking about today which continues from venom versus carnage this one was also written by peter milligan um and then it was drawn by uh derek robertson who drew the boys who i love his artwork he's so good i love his wolverine run especially um but this one i'm not a big fan of uh even artistically there's some great panels in this but then there's some other ones where there's some confusion on like design that i kind of was thrown off by like there's a scene where king cobra is choking toxin and in one scene you can see like the outline of human eyes squinting and then in the next panel you see like goggles over human eyes and then the next panel you just see just white like venom style uh, so I felt like there was some inconsistencies there, uh, or maybe when he was being choked, there was like air bubbles, like, and I don't know, but they had reflections. And I, so I don't know, whatever. Um, there was so little things like that, that I kind of was just like, eh, but I, you know, I love Derek. So, and his art's so freaking amazing. So there, there was some scenes in this that I thought were really strong and really great Derek stuff. And then there was some other scenes where I was like, eh, but I think that's mainly just because the story didn't do anything for me either. This had just one of the worst stories uh, in all of these miniseries that we've covered. And it, it sucks. And, and so that's why I kind of was like, oh, let's call this a toxic, you know, uh, Thanksgiving. Because we're talking about the toxin character, but I'm I'm going to be so negative on it. I mean, and, and the thing is, it's such a bummer because 
I even still try to find some good in storylines when I review them, but this one I just I couldn't find much. Like the dialogue is so bad. I, I would say one positive, Peter Milligan, who was writing X-Men stuff uh, right before this time, he did some stuff with a character called Dupe, like X-Force Dupe. It's like this green blob. He makes two appearances in this, kind of, like one as an art exhibit, like two pages later. Uh, like it was like one page at the beginning of an issue, and there's like a guy holding a Dupe sign, and there's like a spray-painted picture of Dupe behind him. And then the two pages later, there's another almost looking dupe thing that's like an art exhibit with like one eye or something. And I was just like, Sigh. but that, seeing dupe, I was kind of like, yeah, all right. I mean, that was some Peter Milligan stuff that I actually did like. Uh, but this book, I, I the, the, the dialogue is so bad in this book. Um, the beats are way off. The characterization of, of Pat Mulligan is he's not a likable character in a lot of ways. And I don't mean like an Eddie Brock gray area way. I mean, straight up boring and kind of borderline creepy um he uses the symbiote so like as you know from venom vs carnage he had to leave his family he, he he had a monster inside of him and he didn't want to be around his family because he was like the symbiote came out while he was holding his baby and it freaked him out he didn't want the symbiote to do anything because the symbiote's the craziest ever but now in this book the symbiote rationalizes with him to some degree i'm like isn't it like an infant like you know i guess but carnage was like an infant but it was immediately um, influenced by Cletus Cassidy and his personality. This one, I guess, is boring because he's attached to Pat Mulligan, and Pat Mulligan's a boring character, um, and uh, and so there's not much to the symbiote in this one. And then there's inconsistencies in the writing. So, like, when Pat Mulligan is like, all right, I'm going to go talk to this criminal at, at this jail because I'm trying I'm trying to hunt down like King Cobra he takes down King Cobra uh, Spider-Man shows up and talks to him and he's like hey you know Razor Fist is out there who's this guy who has knives for hands and uh, you know Toxin's like all right well I, you know I'll, I'll definitely help you go find him he doesn't really help Spider-Man go find him it's almost like Spider-Man's given him missions to do in a way which doesn't make any sense at all um, but uh, Spider-Man does check in on him and he doesn't fully trust Pat so that's very in keeping with Spider-Man and there's a moment at the end where He's nearby, ready to web Pat in case he doesn't do the right thing. But then Pat does when he takes down Razor Fist. He does the right thing. So then Spider-Man's like, okay, cool. And he just kind of gives a thumb. He turns like the web hand into a thumbs up or something. He's like, yeah, all right, fine. I can trust you. You're doing all right. Um, but the the whole the, the build up to Razor Fist was like, he could have caught him here, didn't. He let him get away. He could have done something here, didn't. Let him get away. And it was just this dragged out. Like you could have really done this as like maybe three one shots where it's like, all right, him versus King Cobra and then him versus Razor Fist and then him versus the Wrecking Crew or whatever. You could have easily just done something like that and just banged out these three one shots with different artists and um, and, and told a story that way in, in a roundabout way. But this miniseries was just, it's so, so dragged out and, and pointless. Um, the one thing they do to like fill as story filler is Pat uses the symbiote to turn himself into a, a different looking guy, like a guy who has like a pot belly. He's kind of like a dad looking guy and he's, but he's nerdy, he's got glasses and he like sits in the park every day and he, and, and Pat transformed as this new guy named Larry, I think. And he watches his wife, you know, with her stroller with their newborn baby and or like six month old baby or whatever. Now um, she's like walking the baby through the park and he's watching her as like another person and uh, then eventually bond, be, uh, builds a friendship with her and then to a point where there might be something romantic going on. So he himself is created a new persona with the symbiote to change his look. Uh, then that new persona is hitting on his wife and then she kisses him uh, like on the cheek one day and says, hey, I'll, I'll meet you back here tomorrow. It's been really nice talking to you. I like this you know, friendship that we're building. And I'm like, what a what a weird thing like to ah uh, like i know you want to do new things and different things with characters and 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 maybe because you're writing toxin it's a symbiote you want to do the gray area thing but this was just not the way to do it like this is these story beats are so bad and the dialogue is so horribly expositiony like there's like a scene where pat is talking to a, a cop that he used to work with and he's like you remember venom and uh oh uh carnage and it's like, really? You just don't know that off the top of your head? He's like, but you know, do you remember those characters? Um, and then the other guy's like, yeah, of course I remember them. And I thought he was going to say something like what, like Maximum Carnage related, like tie into continuity. He just goes, yeah, I know them. They always like, you know, cause a mess. And Spider-Man is always, you know, taking them down and making us look as cops look bad again. And I'm just like, that's the thing you say? <laughs> like, like uh, you don't you don't reference like continuity or anything. You don't reference like the, the time that all the heroes 
had to fight him in New York for maximum carnage or anything like that. Uh, so I was like, okay. Or he didn't say, oh yeah, recently he just tore a muck through town or something like, you know, it's like nothing or, or yeah, he, that guy who escapes Ravencroft all the time. Like, um, so yeah, he just kind of was like, oh yeah, he made, he made us cops look, you know, they, those guys make Spider-Man look good and us cops look bad. And then, uh, he's like, yeah, well, you know, um, do you know how Venom, uh, you know, bonded with that one guy, Eddie Brock, and then went to jail and then had an offspring and that and bonded with Cletus Cassidy, the serial killer. And I'm like, that's literally the dialogue in this book. He's just, just telling you like, uh, like, like the past events of things. Um, and, uh, and I don't know, it's, 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 in a, but in the most on the nose direct way, uh, exposition way, and it, it's terrible. So uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of this book. Uh, by the end, uh, he like his dad, uh, Pat's dad, gets killed by Razor Fist because he doesn't deal with them in the beginning like he should have. Um, he does get in a battle with like uh, the part of the Wrecking Crew. I think Pile Driver and uh, and Wrecker are there, um, but uh, but Bone Crusher, whoever the the third guy, or a Pile Driver, one of them, like one of them's not there. So uh, so anyway, the Wrecking Crew's there. He fights them for a little bit takes them down, talks to Spider-Man again, and then uh, his dad gets put in jeopardy when Razor Fist kind of starts to figure out who Toxin is, kills his dad, you know, typical cliche, boring stuff. Um, like, not, not that, like, a death shouldn't mean something, you know, to a character, but they do it in the sixth issue. Like, at the beginning of the sixth issue, his dad dies, and uh, he goes to the funeral and sees his wife there, and then she yells at him and spits in his face. And, uh, but the inconsistencies in writing, what I was talking about earlier, was how Pat will say, all right, I'm going to go to this jail and talk to this criminal. And when he talks to the criminal, it's just Pat talking. It's just him asking the criminal questions about, because uh, the criminal, one of them is, uh, he's Jekyll and Hyde. So he's like, hey, tell me, what, what's it like to control the monster inside of you? And I'm like, oh, that's an interesting concept. But while he's talking to Jekyll and Hyde, um, he's, the symbiote is not talking to him at all. And then when he goes back home and sits in his couch in his underwear and he's just depressed and he's watching TV, the symbiote's like, come on, get up, let's go do stuff. And I'm like, why isn't that symbiote there present talking in his head while he's asking questions about how to deal with the symbiote? Like, it's like very lazy, convenient writing. Like, oh, you know what? I don't want the symbiote here in this scene because I want to focus on Pat talking to... But it's like when you're writing characters that have symbiotes, you can't have quiet moments with them not really not unless the symbiote either isn't attached or that you come up with some dumb thing where the symbiotes have to like sleep for like an hour a day um and then pat goes and you know and because it's oh it's a newborn symbiote it has to rest one hour a day you could have come up with any dumb thing to uh to make it to where the symbiote makes sense why it's quiet but they don't like it's just the and, and not that any of those reasons would make sense either but still it's like you come up with something and they don't and so anytime Peter Milligan, the writer, doesn't want uh, the voice of the symbiote to talk in Pat Mulligan's head. He just doesn't do it. And and I'm like, no, but that's what makes this interesting. Like, it, it's you're not writing one character. You're writing two characters. So there shouldn't be a moment where Eddie is talking to Spider-Man and the, the voice of the symbiote isn't bar barking in his ear. That's what the movie did really well, was every time Eddie was talking to Anne or he was at the doctor talking to Dan or whatever it was, he always had the symbiote just like in his head talking and it annoyed the living hell out of him. And so he's like, shut up, shut up. And it makes him look like a crazy person to people who are just like passing by. So that's the fun of this. That's what the movie I think did right. And the comics a lot of times do wrong where these writers are like, oh, I want to focus on this scene between these two characters. And it's like, but you can't because there's a symbiote there. So it has to be those two characters and you have to have dialogue, uh, you know, or word bubbles or whatever, or, um, or caption boxes, whatever it is, you have to have them around because that's what makes it different than other characters in, in other comics is that there is a, a second voice in the, the char main character's head. So, and, and it can't just pop up when it's convenient for you. It should consistently be there unless Eddie says like before he goes in, like, hey, sh like he did in the movie, he said, hey, shut up don't talk right now. I'm going to go in and deal with this on my own. And the suit's like, fine, Eddie, whatever. And then Eddie talks to, you know, Cletus Cassidy one-on-one. -on -one. At least Eddie established before he went in, hey, shut up, don't talk. And that gives you a reason why the symbiote doesn't talk. I still feel like it would, but it still gives you a reason why it didn't. That's what I mean. So these, these books, uh, you know, I know you can't add, you know, critique it retroactively because this book came out way before the movie came out obviously uh, but i'm just saying writers should know that and past writers like david mcleany and other people have done that where the voice is just constant and uh, that's what makes it so interesting with these characters so when you make that voice pause uh it's 
you know, unless without someone telling it to pause, uh, it's, I don't know. I think it's just lazy, uh, just lazy writing. Um, so that's what I mean. Like the, the, so there's scenes where just Pat's talking and then the next scene where Pat's doing nothing, the suit's talking. And I'm like, I'm like, no, that's that voice is in his head all day, no matter what he does. And when he goes to like the, the villain, the answer, He's like, tell me what the answer is to, you know, uh, controlling the symbiote. And then the, the, you know, he's like, ooh, okay, let me think about this. And I'm just like, the, but the, the symbiote should be barking in his head saying, no, it's like, who cares what, you know, what it is? We'll figure it out together. You know, like it should have a reaction to these things when Pat is trying to deal or handle it. Um, it should have some kind of reaction. It does later where it kind of like doesn't come out when Pat needs it the most when it's fighting Razor Fist. But that also doesn't make sense where it's like, you know, like, unless you, unless you, um, visualize it in pat's head as a kid in his room locking the door with pat as the parent outside going hey come on out i need you buddy i need you and then the suit's like no you know and it's like acting like a child but they don't peter milligan doesn't approach it that way either so in the end when toxin gets the one up on razor fist he looks like he might kill him because razor fist is like yeah i killed your dad you know what are you going to do about it and then he's about to kill him and then at the end he just decides not to and he does the right thing and that's when spider-man backs down and says all right i'm not going to go after him either so you know he did the right thing he's a hero and that's how kind of how the book ends is is just Peter Milligan's, uh, you know, creation of the character Pat Mulligan and Toxin. Uh, they're kind of you know, they did the right thing or whatever. And, and they're they're getting in control of their monster inside or we're learning to work together or whatever. Uh, but just in the most boring way possible. I mean, I, this series, this six issue series was just so, so uh, such a bummer. And I think even Roman from RNS and and some of the other guys told me because I, I, I remember I was like, well, wasn't the Toxin miniseries pretty good? And I think I just sort of thought of that because. Derek Robertson did the art and so and I like him so I, was, I probably just assumed it because I know I read this once years and years ago when it came out like 2006 or 7 or whenever it was um it came out you know it was like a new Avengers tie-in or something um but I because he was like helping Spider-Man uh rally together all of the the escaped villains from the raft just kind of like King Cobra and all these guys um but I but he was really sending them back to Rikers because I guess the raft couldn't contain them because of the you know the breakout so i guess they were being sent to Rikers. so that's kind of what this series is 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 him taking down those criminals that got away that spider-man couldn't get to in his like miniseries breakout or some of the other ones so i mean i guess yeah okay so he had a mission in a way and he was helping spider-man but um it's just it's so boring <laughs> and it's like if you're going to take d-list villains do kind of interesting things with them and they really don't I, I think at the end they try to set up some story where uh that uh, razor fist influenced a bunch of kids to go home and kill their parents or something so the last page i think is like kids killing their parents at like a birthday party or something and i'm just like who cares and i don't even know if that story was ever followed up on because who cares <laughs> like it's it's dark and weird but I, I just feels like one of those ideas where they're like look how edgy i am i'm gonna have kids kill their parents and and you know toxin he's gonna get another miniseries to to solve that problem and he never did <laughs> he never did no one cared about this character and so i i see now when rns and all you guys were saying dude your memory's off like that that miniseries was not good venomverse carnage was because i didn't really like that one too much either i just thought it was okay um but uh but i i was like oh maybe it's the toxin one that's good and it, all of you guys were telling me no it's not it's not good you were right <laughs> like when i was reading it i was like it felt like it felt like doing a homework assignment to a class that i'm not even signed up for like i was like wait a minute i thought i was in history why am i doing like a trigonometry uh thing here um it just yeah it was it was bad i was like uh and and not not trigonometry because it's smart or anything just like i was just like this is not what i thought i was getting into uh it was just did not have fun reading this at all and when rereading it i just i didn't either i was like man and what's bummer is like my last episode was kind of negative and now this one is definitely negative and <laughs> so i was like uh, even more negative than the last one i would feel but i'm just like man like i can i i want to get back to the positive stuff and i've been rereading the agent venom stuff right now to get pr prepared for next season uh, in january and i'm loving it like i'm i'm loving the remainder stuff i haven't got to the colin bun stuff yet but i'm loving the remainder stuff i'm doing uh, i'm reading the one now where it's a crossover with like ghost rider and uh, red hulk and stuff like that and x23 i'm on that part now and i'm i'm digging what's happening so i'm looking forward to talking about agent venom and flash thompson and i'm and then also going back and talking about tooth and claw and uh, venom finale and uh, you know eight you know uh, what was it the one he did with ghost rider the crossover with ghost rider um so there's there's a lot of stuff coming up next season we'll talk about and then there's some couple more carnage stories we got to get to and carnage's 
uh, ongoing series, which was like 16 issues by Jerry Conway. We're going to get into that next season too. So we have great past stories that we're going to get into. We're going to get back to the positivity. And then obviously we have a lot of movie news that will be coming up starting in, you know, soon probably, but definitely start rolling more and more from January onward. So uh, we'll have a ton of content, ton of positive stuff to talk about in the future. But yeah, it's a bummer to, to get near the end of the season and end on a bunch of down notes. So hopefully the next two episodes, I'll come up with some fun ideas so we can end the, the season on a big bang. And if you have any theories or anything, uh, you know, any, or not theories, but if you have any suggestions of things you'd like to see in the last two episodes, let me know. I thought about for episode 450 doing a, a chapter read. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking me to review this and I finally uh, got through most of it. I'm not done with it yet, uh, but I thought about, uh, you know, I'm of course, maybe we'll do a review next season when I finish it. Uh, but uh, some, I was thinking maybe for episode 450 or another episode maybe we'll do it next season you guys let me know i thought about reading the first chapter doing the voices doing all that stuff um you know that's the scene where like uh, venom i think like saves the girl in the alley and he pats her on the head um i think it's that scene so if you guys want to hear something like that for an episode let me know because what i'll do is i'll maybe i'll put some images from the comic up and i'll do the voices or something and it'll just be like a good um you know 10 you know minute video or not even probably 10 minutes um but or maybe i'll add it as like a bonus clip at the end of episode 450 you guys let me know it'll take some editing it'll take some doing it'll take some time to, to work on but uh I, but i think i can do it i'm off next sunday so i could probably do it but yeah there's roman from rns also he has a quote on the back so that's when when i said his name i was like wait a minute the book it's right behind you uh but i thought about doing like a chapter read of like the first chapter of that book and uh, and then yeah maybe next season we'll do like a proper review of it so let me know what you think. If you have any other suggestions, any other things you want me to cover for our 450th episode, let me know in the comments below. And maybe we'll do like a big 30 minute to one hour episode and just do a bunch of stuff in there. Um, so any suggestions, I'd really like it and I'd appreciate it. Let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, let me know what you think of the Toxin miniseries if you've read it. If you haven't, I don't know. Normally I tell people to go read everything for themselves, but... I don't know. I'm, I really kind of want to say skip this one, uh, but you know what? Make up your own mind. Go read it yourself. You could probably find it on sale on Comixology whenever they do, like on uh, Black Friday or post Black Friday, they're going to do big sales. Uh, but usually at the end of the year, Christmas, the last week of December, Comixology has great end of the year sales on almost everything. Uh, so I would say, you know, wait till then. If you see the Toxin miniseries, it'll probably be $2.99 for the trade paperback. Just buy it then, read it yourself, and let me know what you think uh, later on. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, we've got two episodes left, and then we're going to be ending the season. Uh, I'm excited to hit that milestone, end the season, wrap it all up, and I'm excited to get to next season. So, uh, you know, thank you guys for helping us get here. And that's my biggest thing that I'm thankful for this year besides, you know, family and friends and things like that that I have in my everyday life. But as far as YouTube goes, you guys, I'm very thankful for. And so thanks for getting us to this point, and thanks for encouraging me to keep going. It means a lot. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.